Hi everybody, Rain of Galen here. Welcome to my very first make video on my channel's reboot. Uh, I really hope you like what you see. If you don't, keep it to yourself. So today I'm gonna be making an item from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is one of my all-time favorite games, potentially my favorite of all time. Uh, it's a close call between Breath of the Wild and Ocarina of Time, both excellent Zelda games. Today I'm gonna be making the Amber Earrings, one of my favorite armor items from the game. Now, if anybody was paying attention to the community area of my YouTube channel, uh, you may have noticed a photo of a different make, certainly not the Amber Earrings. I'm still working on that, but it's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. And I wanna make sure that I do it right, or at least, as right as I can. So that's still in the works. It's coming. It'll probably be the third video or so. So that said, without any further ado, let's make some amber earrings. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into my Breath of the Wild save and load in the amber earrings to get some good source material, get some screenshots to be able to get this as accurate as possible, which uh, of course I'll fail at. Next thing I'm going to do is grab my case of original Sculpey in white because that is the color that it comes in. I'm going to roll out a small piece here to make my teardrop shapes. And the, the teardrop is the part that actually attaches to the ear. I'm only going to make one of these. My goal here is to have them all as close to identical as possible. So what I'm going to be doing is making one and then I'm going to create a mold from that one teardrop shape so that I can make uh, four identical-ish pieces. So here I am uh, making the teardrop shape. I'm going to round that off. And as you can see, my tool is pretty worn through. Uh, I, I have not been nice to this tool and apparently Sculpey will eat through the paint coating on the sides of your tools if they are the cheap ones. So lesson learned there. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to be rounding off that teardrop shape, trying to get it as perfect as I can, uh, because we all know everything I make is just absolutely perfect. And then I'm going to be adding in the little leaf like vein designs in the sides of that teardrop and adding the indention for the amber jewel in the center. Now that that's done, it's time to go ahead and make my first amber drop. So I'm gonna be cutting out a printout of my source material here just to use as a guide to make sure I get the shape right and to make sure that it's as close to symmetrical as possible. Each of these little angles was actually very difficult to cut out. This is my second attempt. The first attempt, I did not use a guide and let's just say it was more just an angled blob. So I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife actually to cut out uh, the shape instead of trying to mold it with my silicone tools. That would be a nightmare and just take forever. And I really wanna make sure that I get those nice angles in the shape. So at this point, I'm just going to be smoothing out all of the cuts that I've made to get those nice smooth edges, uh, as well as get the outside shape the way that I would like it to look. Uh, I want to make sure that I have nice clean lines in this piece as opposed to the smooth organic teardrop piece. Once that's done, stick it in the oven for 25 minutes and voila, we have little pieces that we can make a mold with. And I'm gonna use a popsicle stick and a piece of scrap MDF to give myself a specific thickness here, about five millimeters between the two. And that way I've got a nice deep piece of clay that I can push my design into to create the mold that I'm gonna be using to create all four of these little pieces later. So now I've got that. Now I don't want to waste any clay here. Uh, clay is expensive these days. So I'm going to cut off any excess around the edges so that I can save that and use it for some of the pieces later. Once we've done that, saved all of our clay for later, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, this time using a water wash on the clay and on the piece just to make sure it doesn't stick. We've got some pretty sharp edges on here and they have a tendency to stick in the uncured clay if you're not careful. Now that we've got it in there good, we're gonna take it out very carefully and give it a little pet and cut away all of the excess again, just like we did on the previous piece. 
and then just stick it in the oven for another 25 minutes and voila. Give it a little hardness test. Yes, it is in fact cured. And set this piece aside. Let's go ahead and make the teardrop shapes uh, using our new mold that we just created. We're gonna use water again because there's these little lines in this design and I'm afraid the little teardrops are gonna stick to that. So uh, as you can see, pretty easy to pull them out when you use water like this, cause you totally didn't see the three or four pieces that I screwed up because they did stick. So once you've got your little pieces cut out, I'm just gonna smooth our edges here. And as you can see, I made six pieces, even though the earring design only has four. And the reason for this is definitely not because I can't count. It's because I wanted to make sure I would have extras in case I screwed one up along the way. Right. So I'm gonna keep the four that look the best, discard the other two, and then smooth my edges just a bit more before I go ahead and put on a coating of Pearl X in silver. This is actually one of my favorite ways to give a metallic finish to Sculpey clay. You can, of course, just use a metallic type paint, but this gives, I think, the nicest sheen. And another 25 minutes later, and we have four teardrops for the holy part of our earrings. Next thing I'm gonna do is do a little bit of a black wash. I'm just gonna mix some cheap acrylic paint with some water, mostly gonna be water in this mix, and then brush that over. And this gives it a nice antiqued finish as that black settles into the crevices in the design. And then I'm just gonna dab off any excess to have that nice antiqued silver finish. I was going to add a gloss coat using Sculpey Glaze, but when I opened up my Sculpey Glaze container, I realized it was all separated. Ah! Instead of using Sculpey Glaze, I'll be doing a UV resin coat on the outside once I'm a little further along in the design. Now here I've mixed some UV resin with some orange and yellow pigment. Uh, some of it has a bit of a sparkle to it. So I was really happy with how this mix came out. And then I'm just gonna dab this stuff into the crevices we created to create the amber jewels in the center of those teardrop shapes. And then you just stick it under a UV light. And a few minutes later, you've got hardened resin pieces, as long as your UV resin is still in good shape. Now for the amber drops, I'm gonna be using this orange sparkly Sculpey. I know they're probably supposed to be more translucent, but Sculpey's what I've got. So this is what we're using. And I'm gonna be doing the water wash and sticking this into the mold. Now this mold has some sharp edges, so I did have some trouble with the pieces sticking. That first one came out absolutely perfect. Give it a little poke. I don't know why I do that. Uh, and then cut away the extra around the edges. Now I'm not gonna show you all the times I screwed up. I'm just gonna show you the pretty ones. And once we're happy with those, we can stick them in the oven for another 25 minutes. And here's our hardened amber drops. Now, why did we make four of these? Well, I plan to actually take two halves and put them together using some Sculpey and some Sculpey glue so we can get that nice three-dimensional look to the earrings that we saw in the game. So here's my Sculpey glue. I'm just gonna be putting that on pretty thin, actually. You don't need much. And then a very thin layer of Sculpey clay in between, same color I used before. And then I'm gonna use a silicone tool to smooth out the joint there between the two halves. This is gonna be how I go ahead and give it that nice smooth angle on the edges. And then we'll use the power of video editing to do the second, stick them in the oven, and forget about them for a while because now we're gonna go back to the teardrop shapes and put that coat of UV resin on that I promised. 
Uh, I'm using a piece of tape backwards on here, taped down to a little mat to hold those little pieces in place while I put the UV resin on. And then we're gonna put that underneath the UV light again to cure it. Now back to our amber drops. They're baked now, they're nice and warm. Give them a little poke and I'm gonna carve off any areas where I don't feel like I've got a nice smooth edge. Because remember, uh, in the game, these are fairly angled pieces, very smooth. And I wanna make sure that those seams that we made earlier are nice and smooth. Now I'll clean up my mess with my little handheld vacuum. And then we're gonna drill a couple holes so that we can stand these up while we put some UV resin on them. Once we've drilled our holes, we're gonna snap a toothpick in half and use that to prop these up while we put some UV resin on them. We're gonna take our little amber popsicles and stick them in an armature clamp before cleaning up our mess once again. By the way, I love this little vacuum. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description so you can buy one too. Now it's time to put on that coat of UV resin. We're gonna use the same stuff we used for the smaller jewels in the teardrop pieces uh, because this has a nice translucence to it in addition to the little bit of sparkle that we get from the powder pigment. I'm gonna make sure I get a nice even coat on all of the sides of each of our two amber popsicles before holding a UV light to them for a few minutes and then deciding to stick them outside because it didn't work very well. Now, switching gears, I'm gonna murder a couple of vintage clip-on earrings because I need the clip-on pieces for our teardrops and then use some wire clippers to clip them into angles so that the pieces don't show. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is cut a couple of little squares out of my remaining Sculpey clay. And this is how our amber pieces are gonna dangle off of our teardrops. I'm gonna stick those to the clip-on pieces that we just took off of our old earrings. And we're gonna put a little hole in them and use our Pearl X pigment to turn those silver the same way we did with our teardrops. Once that's done, we'll stick them in the oven for uh, probably about 20 minutes. And then we have nice hard pieces that we can use as our bases. I'm gonna put a little bit of UV resin on that to get them nice and shiny, same way we did with our teardrops. And then we'll let that cure for a few minutes under our UV light once again. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut out our leaf shapes that are the caps for the amber drops. This is how our amber drops are going to be attaching to the pieces we just made. So they're very leaf-like, they're very organic. I'm gonna be using just a very thin layer of Sculpey clay to build these and use my little silicone tools to cut in the designs that we're gonna have. And I'm just eyeballing this because we're gonna finish sculpting it while it's on the amber pieces themselves. I'm using a combination of sculpting tools as well as some handmade ones, uh, including a mechanical pencil with a pin shoved in the end. I like to use this one a lot for tiny details. Once we get our shapes just right, we're gonna be putting some more of that silver pigment from Pearl X onto the tops of these amber pieces. And I'm getting it all over the amber, that's okay, we'll wash that off later. And while those are baking, we'll go ahead and glue the teardrops onto the fronts of our clip-on earring pieces. I'm just using some basic tacky glue for this. It does take a little while to dry, but once it cures, it's pretty solid. Once the clay on our amber pieces is cured, I'm gonna use isopropyl alcohol to wash off the silver from the amber parts. And then I'm gonna do the same black wash on the tops of these that we used on our teardrops earlier, dabbing off the excess so we get that nice antique look. Now don't do this if you like your paintbrushes because I definitely had to throw this one away when I was done, but I'm adding some UV resin to give it a nice shine. And then while we're waiting for that to cure, I'll go ahead and glue the backs onto our clip-on earrings using the same tacky glue we used earlier. 
And finally, it's time to assemble the earrings once everything has cured. I'm gonna be using these small stainless steel jump rings to connect our two pieces together for each of our earrings. And when one of the holes sealed up from the UV resin, I thought I could drill a hole. Ah, I've never been so wrong. So I had to use more tacky glue to glue it back together. Once my tacky glue dried, I was able to finish putting everything together and they were done. So there they are. You wanna see the amber earrings in all their clip-on glory and uh, all done. Ta-da! They're actually not as heavy as I thought they were gonna be. Uh, I could do this. Yeah, got some new earrings. So there you have it. Those are the amber earrings from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, they were really fun to make. I hope you enjoyed watching me make them as much as I enjoyed making them. I'm also still working on getting my gaming channel up and running. So stay tuned for that. Thanks very much guys for watching this video. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe. And uh, if you want, you can buy me a coffee because I like caffeine. It makes me awake so I can make stuff. <laughs> huh. Let's try that again.